everyone, Fred here, and we've got Battleground Predictions for you. <laughs> You'd think I'd be too busy doing Summer Spectacular videos to not do this. Well, just proves what I can do for all of you. Now, Battleground hasn't had the best of times since coming into WWE two years ago. The pay-per-views have been heavily criticised, the matches are just throwaways, and overall it hasn't had the best reputation. This year... Well, it looks like we've got a good pay-per-view on our hands. Some of the matches look like they will deliver, and look at the main event on the poster. It looks like it's going to be an interesting show that people are going to watch. But then again, let's look at the matches and see whether it'll actually live up to potential. And we get to the first match of the night, which isn't going to be the pre-show. I, I don't review the pre-show. If I did, I would end up having to redo three years' worth of pay-per-view reviews, which wouldn't be good for me or you, considering the time I've got on my hands at the minute. But we go into the Tag Team Championship match first, with the primetime players defending against the New Day in the rematch that everyone's looking forward to. However, when you look at the rematch, it doesn't seem like it's going to be any different than the way the match went last time. The primetime players have just won the championship and they need to move on to a new opponent. Now, who that opponent's going to be? Well, many say it would have been Harper and Rowan, but they've got injuries, so that won't happen. Then, well, what heel team could they face? The Ascension? Which then puts into perspective, maybe they could actually have the tag titles go through a hot potato cycle and possibly come out with a new champion this time round. The New Day try and cheat. There ends up being some, some massive kerfuffle with the authority. It then turns into some kind of multi-man cage variety at SummerSlam, or even a multi-man ladder variety, so you don't have cheating going on and we get a winner fair and square. Maybe this is a three-match series. Who knows? I mean, thinking about the lack of heel tag teams in the division, maybe it would be good for the New Day to win. And that probably has just changed my prediction on the fly when I actually think about it, but I think the primetime players keeping the championships is the most important thing, but giving the New Day a second run would piss off a lot of people, and that heel heat would just get ever more prevalent. And you can't go wrong with that, I'm pretty certain. So, you know, actually, you know what? I am going to give the title win to the New Day, just for the sake of excitement, you know? Now we get to Sheamus versus Randy Orton, a match that's happening because reasons. Seriously, a couple of weeks down the line and a few anticlimactic uh, interferences and beatings. I still have no idea why I should be interested in this match at all. I don't really see a reason. I mean, we have we should have had Sheamus versus Neville because that's how the end of Money in the Bank happened and it would have been nice to see Neville try to fight for that briefcase. But no, WWE thought, oh, we'll give these two guys who continuously get booed in their matches something to do. <laughs> Seriously, every time these two wrestle, it gets booed, and it's not a good thing. So maybe we're thinking, oh, we put it on pay-per-view, we give it some beatings, and Randy Orton is a face. It should be great, right? Uh, who knows? Anyway, I'm looking at this match and thinking, okay, both men have looked dominant, but more so Randy Orton, which gives the impression that Sheamus is going to come out winning this one because they need to keep momentum for him looking strong in case of an end inevitable cash-in. But Orton hasn't been back for long since mining the bank. So maybe him getting the win after losing the bank ladder match would be good for him. And see, both have good logistical reasons to win this thing. But then I'm looking at the future and I'm saying to myself, look, Sheamus doesn't need to win this. Orton needs to rebound. He would be good to win this. But then where does he go from here? What does Orton do after this? And this is the problem with this feud. It feels like a one-match deal. And if it would have been better with Neville involved, because then at least we're getting Neville versus the Money in the Bank winner, where inevitably some screwy finishes could happen, leading to a match where the face gets the win at SummerSlam, and it makes it all fantastic. You know what I mean? And that's the thing with this match. I want to see WWE give me a reason as to why this is happening. Because apart from these two wanting to beat each other up because of an injury cause in the ladder match, that's it. It's a bit poor, and honestly, it makes me think that the winner doesn't matter here, because both of these guys will get something important happen to them at SummerSlam coming up. It's just, it just doesn't feel like the match that WWE are building it up to be. It's a throwaway match for me, but if I'm going to pick a winner, I'm going to go for Sheamus, just because Wrestling 101 dictates he hasn't looked good over the last couple of weeks, he'll need to get the win somewhere. Now, this match is a bit of an oddball. Because Ryback got injured. We were going to have Ryback versus The Miz versus The Big Show for the Intercontinental Championship. We're not going to see it. Because Ryback got a staph infection. Yeah, 
Ryback got a staph infection and got it treated at the snap of a finger. CM Punk must be absolutely writhing in anger here that he couldn't get a staph infection treated in many, many months, and yet Ryback got it treated almost instantaneously. I, seriously, <laughs> stories were not better written than this. It's incredible. Anyway... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic here. With Ryback out of the picture, I believe it's going to be a singles match between The Miz and The Big Show. And I bet the winner is going to go on and face Ryback at SummerSlam. Now, to be honest with you, both of these two are heels. So, one of them has to win this match in a despicable manner. Now, of course, people are going to boo this match because Big Show is slow and Miz is awful and hated. And of course, I like The Miz... Which is why I'd rather like to see him win this one, because he's been treated like crap. Because his character needs to be treated like crap. He is hated. And imagine the reaction to seeing The Miz winning. People would actually want to see Big Show beat The Miz, because it would be a great destruction thing. A good filler match between the last two matches, and people will all be happy. Thing is... <sighs> I just don't see it. I really don't. I can sense WWE wants Big Show versus Ryback on a big stage where Ryback takes Big Show out to the shed with a gun and puts it to his head and kills him off for good, which would be great because I wouldn't mind that in the slightest. I really wouldn't because it would be great to see Big Show off air after years of not really doing much for me. But... It would just be better for the story if Miz, after being put through hell by both of these two, gets the win that would inevitably make him look good going forward to a match against Ryback in the future once that staff infection is cleared up. And also think about it. How much bragging do you think Miz would do on Raw next week? It would be crazy. It would be entertaining. And also, it'd be a good thing to see if... Uh, Ryback would actually be able to go out and kick the crap out of him with a staff infection. Would be quite fun indeed. So I'm going to give the inevitable match, if it does happen, to The Miz. If it doesn't, well, you can ignore this prediction and just think about something else. Now we have Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. And you know what? I'm making the prediction right here. Bray Wyatt is going to win. Now, I know you all right now just heard that, and your eyes are rolling into the back of your head, wondering why the hell would I make that prediction? Seriously, you're all thinking to yourself, oh, it's Roman Reigns, he's the golden boy, he's going to win this match and overcome the adversity. <sighs> Here is the point. Bray Wyatt, in this case, must win. Because it makes an inevitable return match better, and inevitably, looking forward, don't you want to see Roman's child actually get involved in this? Because if this match is a one-shot deal where Roman beats Bray and that's the end of it, it really doesn't feel good for narrative sense, does it? And I look at this and think... Okay, Roman has surprised us. He's put on a good match with Big Show in the past. The Money in the Bank contributions were good and solid. Overall, this could be a good match to continue his good run. But I look at this story and just say it, it has writing on the wall for Wyatt to win, whether it's through a clean way or a sleazy heel dirt way. I don't understand how it's going to be done. But I look at Bray and think, you know what? Maybe he has gotten inside Roman's head a bit. Not to mention the fact that Wrestling 101 will always dictate, because the last Raw before the show, we saw Wyatt getting his ass kicked. Of course, if you look at Wrestling 101, it dictates that Roman will lose, because he looks so strong going in. That is a good thing I always know. But I look at Bray and just say, yeah, maybe he has gotten inside the head of Roman. You know, that Roman is so deranged and angry that he just can't focus on the big picture. He may want to club and beat the crap out of Bray, but he will wear himself out leading for Bray to come in, hit all of his power moves, and get the victory. Not to mention, it would be a good time to introduce Roman's kid into the picture to get Bray the win off a distraction. It would be quite fun, and inevitably would again, again make the story work. Because it all ties in, Roman gets a, gets a loss with the way he didn't want it to go, and he inevitably he goes into SummerSlam with this match in some kind of hardcore stipulation where it all works out good. So yeah, I'm just explaining why Roman Reigns is going to lose. If he doesn't, I'm going to look stupid. So get your stupidity flags ready because you might end up having to wave them by the time this night comes around on Sunday. 
Now we have Kevin Owens versus John Cena with the United States Championship on the line. Now, the thing is, when you have a four and a half star match at Elimination Chamber, which is all good, you end up having to think, oh, how are they going to top that? They top it at Money in the Bank with a four and three quarter star. And remember what I said in my review that I want a five star match from these guys. And all due purposes, they probably could. However, I don't think we're going to see it, which is disappointing, to say the least, but here is the problem. We have had Rusev, and we have had Cesaro. Now, those two have come into this US title picture, and honestly, have made the result of this match a bit difficult to predict. You want to know why? Because look at it. John Cena beating Kevin Owens will set up a possibility of a match with Cesaro or Rusev at SummerSlam where one of them caps off John Cena, all's well and good. However, the entire storyline is built up to Kevin Owens getting the victory in the end and having inevitably taking the title off Cena. Now, where do I want this to go? There are two routes we can go towards SummerSlam with this. Owens beats Cena in this match, goes on to have a singles rematch, and... So I would think no Owens would inevitably beat him in a violent, violent rematch, which would be all well and good. Maybe he has low, no respect for the championship upon winning it leading to that. We don't know. But then we have the idea of a fatal four-way match. Now, whether Cena or Owens wins the title is not really that much of a concern, because you can see where my prediction would want to go with this. We need Owens to win. But the problem is, will Cesaro and Rusev get themselves involved? It will add some nice psychology, but then how they would impact on the result of the match would be very interesting indeed. And it's where I actually think maybe John Cena could win through some kind of technicality through this match. Would Rusev take out Cena? Cena, only for it to be a DQ, allowing for Cena to win and keep the belt, even though he didn't actually have to pin Owens, leading to some controversy, allowing for a stipulation like a steel cage to happen at, Mon at SummerSlam to inevitably have this match happen. Like, John Cena winning could provide good psychological foil. Maybe he gets cocky himself and says, oh, look, Owens, I may have beaten you in the worst way possible, but I still did, and it makes Owens incensed to beat the crap out of him, leading to a violent match. See, with this entire thing, I'm looking for the future. The problem is, taking a prediction out of it is going to be really difficult, because I want this match to be different than what the first two were. You know, where we've had great moves, the psychology of Owens berating Cena has all been good, and it's it's been an intense thing to watch, which the crowd have loved, and it's been paced superbly. That's good. The problem is I don't want to see a repeat, a copy-paste of the first two. We need something different. We need something different, and we're going to have to get it to be able to make this work. Whether it's Cesaro or Rusev getting involved, whether it's Owens beating him, or Cena beating him with something different, they've shown all the moves they can do to make these matches exciting. They need to do something more. Maybe they add things. I, I don't know. The thing is, that as long as the match is better and more different than the other two, I will have gotten my money's worth out of this one. So that's all well and good. And the thing is, picking a winner is simple. If I was going to go with my heart, Owens would get the win. If I was going to go with the technicality route, Cena would somehow win, leading to a massive multi-man match. See, with Cena winning, a multi-man match writes itself on the wall, but it would have to be done in such a way where it allows it. In the case of the other ideas, Owens winning the title makes a lot of sense. And the way that this entire thing has gone, Cena has looked strong in the face of Owens, and it's time for Owens to unleash himself and inevitably get the title. So I'm going to go for Owens on this one. Believe it or not, some of you may think I'm insane, thinking, oh, Owen's beating John Cena for the title? Ha! Well, you know what? I'm ready to predict it, because today, I'm feeling good. Kevin Owens for the win, and he'll get that championship. What it leads to afterwards, we'll have to wait and see. Finally, we reach the main event. A main event match that I didn't think would happen until SummerSlam, but here we go anyway. Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Now, I'm going to cut right to the chase here, guys. This match is difficult for me to predict. Why? Because it all looks in the implications of SummerSlam. This is where the problems lie. Because, okay, you can have Brock Lesnar demolish Seth, the title reign ends on a whimper, and... You end up having Seth having a massive tantrum, proclaiming that he should have beaten him, and inevitably going into a match with, I believe, Triple H, and how they aren't doing anything for him, and they didn't bother to have a plan B ready, which is understandable. Then you look at Lesnar. Who is he going to face? 
I mean, he could face Roman Reigns, as everyone's predicting, but these are two faces. Not good. Are we, we going to see Roman? Re are we going to see Roman Reigns be out of the picture, have him against Bray Wyatt instead? Are we going to have a huge match between Sheamus and Brock Lesnar? Are we going to have Randy Orton, who's a face, turn heel somewhere and become the guy to face Brock Lesnar in the dream match? The thing is, a lot of these matches don't make any sense. With Brock Lesnar, he's a marquee guy, but he's in this match. So, is he going to be at SummerSlam at all? Who knows? Is it going to be like many are predicting when The Undertaker comes back to fight Lesnar in a rematch from WrestleMania 30? I mean, even that's come up recently, and I'm thinking, no, I don't even see where that fits in anywhere. Does it really make any sense? But you see, Lesnar winning the match, no matter what happens, makes no sense. No sense. And I understand, yes, he's getting his rematch against Seth. He's going to have to beat the crap out of him. But that's where the psychology of the match will play itself out. Remember at WrestleMania when I said the match is going to be quite easy to go for the beginning. It's going to be, obviously, Roman being beaten up by Brock. And we then have to wait and see how Roman fights back. And that's exactly how the match paced itself and was fantastic as a result. It did itself justice. The same thing has to happen here. You have Seth Rollins being beaten up, manhandled, thrown around like a doll. And it has to show his fighting ability as a champion. Because, of course, for the entirety of his title reign, he's been a chicken shit. He's been an absolute chicken shit. And we have to see Seth Rollins prove he wants the belt. He cares for the belt. He already proved he can beat Dean Ambrose by himself. So now he's in this match on his own fighting for pride of the championship, which he hasn't really flaunted since he got it. And that's the great sense of where this match will go. This match is playing itself into the hands to have Seth Rollins win. And I know so many of you are saying, Fred, it's not possible. Lesnar is going to win. I'm, I have to say it again. Wrestling 101. It will dictate. Lesnar looked like dominant as hell, as he always does, on Raw this past week. He is going to lose. Wrestling 101 always dictates that. But I'm only thinking this. I don't think, I don't think Seth is going to win this match on his own. Because, of course, like I said, would Triple H have a plan B ready? Would Seth think of a plan B? Would there be the Undertaker interference like I've already mentioned? Who knows? But I just have a feeling that Seth winning this match is important because not only is he winning the match going to be the biggest swerve and massive challenge to what fans' perceptions of WWE's product are in quite a while, but also it makes the match that inevitably would happen between Triple H and Seth be amazing to watch. Because remember what happened afterwards, after the Money in the Bank, where Seth said, I did it all by myself, da -da -da, I didn't need any of the authority, I'm better than the authority, yada, yada, yada. Think about it. If he goes into Raw having beaten Brock Lesnar with a plan B orchestrated by Triple H and he still says he did it on his own with no help and Triple H gets pissed, that match between those two at SummerSlam with the title on the line as Seth's ultimate challenge would be insane. The story writes itself. It's fantastic. And that's my point. I look at Brock Lesnar winning, the only thing it sets up is a match with Sheamus possibly, which makes no sense if he ends up losing against Orton tonight. You then see the possibility of the Undertaker match, which will probably happen anyway if it is proven to be true. Then again, I don't know. I just don't know, everybody, because the Roman Reigns thing doesn't make any sense apart from a gentleman's rematch, which for those two... I don't think it really makes much sense. And then we'd know the predicted winner of that match because Roman Reigns would probably win that one. And that's the problem. I look at Seth and say, him winning opens up more avenues where positive things can happen. I would like to see who they come up with to face him or they just put on Triple H and make it a massive grudge match. It feels better for me. And I'm going to say it. Seth Rollins is going to win this match. I, I may lose my confidence as the pay-per-view goes on, depending on faces and heels winning whatever match they do. But in the end, I have to go with my gut. Seth Rollins for the victory. It's going to be difficult to justify if I end up getting it wrong. So, guys, there you have it. There are my Battleground predictions. What do you think of the show? What do you think is going to happen? Go put your views in the comment section. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you like 
like what you've heard today and you want to see more from the wrestling products I do, as well as the other things on the CC Network, click that subscribe button down there. I would love you immensely for it. It'll be all well and good. And you know what, guys? I'll be back with the review on Monday, where hopefully my predictions won't make me look like an absolute idiot. But then again, you guys like it when I rage, so... Let's just hope the pay-per-view continues when Money in the Bank left off and we get a good show out of it. Because in the end, that's all we ask for. I've been Freddie Thomas, you've been people listening. This has been my Battleground Predictions for the CC Network. And I'll see you all next time. Cheers!